windows. I've got this window here. It just it all, all, all appear. And there I am on, on the telly now, on stream. One, two. There I am on, on the telly now, on stream. Yeah. Do that on the old big face as well. Look. One, two. There I am on, on the telly now, on stream. Yeah. Do that on the old big face as well. Loud, isn't it? That one, two. I am on the telly now. On stream. Do that on the old. Okay, got that. Let's pop you. Pop chat. Pop, pop you out. Shuffle you up a bit. Should just appear on the old, on the old image there. Why is chat not there? Chat window. Chat. Chat window, Firefox chat, yeah. Right, let's put it on the old top. <sighs> Scene collection, right now. Tools, file, always on top. Should you put it always on top? Oh, I like my face always on top. Always on top, it's not there. There it is, it's there. Underneath, look, it's under, underneath, not on top, underneath. <laughs> there you go then. Don't know why that's happened today, look. Don't know why that's happened. I've got five minutes to sort it out before Mental Health Monday starts officially, so. I haven't even done the introduction yet. Don't know. Just spent five minutes trying to work out how to put that on top. I'm pretty sure it's one of these edit, transform, move to order, move up, up the order. Edit, order, move to top. There you go, look. There. There you are. Chat. Welcome. <laughs> Covering most of the thing that we're looking at now with the old chat. It's, it's a bit big now, aren't you? Shrink it down a little bit. <laughs> I haven't got this all sorted. That's big face anyway. Web of a browser. Chat's there now. Look on the web browser. That's all right. Got it there now, there. On the web browser. Got it all. Got it all, uh, four minutes still to go, four minutes before we're officially on Mental Health Monday. Wearing a nice Cheetos top today. It's nice, it says real cheese on it, but I don't eat cheese because I'm vegan. It's referring to the speed running kind of cheese. Like, oh yeah, my hair's a different colour as well, isn't it? Yeah. Orange, like that. I thought if I wore orange, then it might make the hair look less orange, but no. Just put a little bit of just lines up the ends a bit in anticipation of potentially yeah you're right <laughs> my natural hair colour is probably a better colour than this to be honest uh, yeah but uh, I was just anticipation of lightening up before I might blue it or green it I don't know I like green don't I green's a good colour I like it just fancied a bit of a change just fancied a bit of a change and that's what today's all about today express yourself where's my picture of Madonna Right, hang on. Obs can go over there. We don't need obs very much now. I've got that. Chat can go. Hang on, that's weird. This has never happened before. Obs is always on top now. What have I, how have I done this? Uh, I'm glad we've still got two minutes before mental health starts. <laughs> uh, I'm looking in the Firefox window. Obs, right. Uh, what I've done is I've put obs always on top. Not just the, the chat, but obs always on top. My thoughts on Shakira. Um, has she done something? <laughs> My thoughts on her is, uh, oh, you hipster, I'm like, starting to fear. I'm going to have to do a big face for that. Where's my big face? Oh, tonight, my hipster, I'm like, starting to fear. That's, that's what I know of Shakira. She did that. That was popular. And then there's all the um, all the old fruity tooting of the old fruity rooty tooting, isn't there? There's a bit of fruity rooty tooting goes on with the old hips. A bit of the old dancing. It's like, ooh. <laughs> it's the old fruity tooting going. Oh, and the song's all about it. And then uh, I think, is, is she Hispanic? Or does she sing in Spanish as well? Uh, so they're generally positive. 
vibes they are, aren't they? Enough of this. You know, look, we still haven't fixed the obs. <laughs> right, look. File, always, oh no, that's it. Untick always on top. Now I can move chat, yes, there we go. Now chat's on top of obs. Now we've got that. <laughs> and what I wanted to express, I've got a picture from a, where is it? Must be that one, there you go. Look at that. Look at that, there you go. That's better, it's, chat's disappeared to the back now. I've clicked obs again. Where should we put chat? Let's put chat somewhere else. <laughs> Going to get a second monitor soon, I think. <laughs> Got so much on the old screen today. Uh, with OBS, what I did is I pressed a button and it made it always OBS, and then I couldn't move it into the other windows. It was just always OBS. It's gone now. Right, officially, time T minus right now. Hi, you're with Scott and Madonna, obviously. It's Mental Health Monday. It's midnight, it's Monday, it's always Monday, it's always midnight. This is your right ear and your left ear. It's 8pm GMT. It's 8pm GMT, hopefully not peeking into the red. I did notice there was a little bit of a metallic audio buzz sound coming sometimes. And I know what it is. It's the wire that I've got trailing plugged in. And when I wiggle it around and move it, the sound happens a bit more or less. So I apologise for that. <laughs> but we're just in the process of making this all better. It's, it's, it's coming along. It's coming along. Right. I, I assume this is like a comedic time to go although where you are it might be like you know a different time of the day from 8pm GMT in the evening so you might have to go so I, yeah but it is always nice to see you nice to chat I should be on more I should be on more shouldn't I I will be on more I had a bit of a chuffer of a week the, what you call it Mental Health Monday last week the export of that video was like 12 gig for some reason he didn't want to do it and I did a little chunk like, where's that? Mental Health Monday, where's our channel? There it is. <laughs> I told you to leave. No, I don't think any stream would want any of his uh, core Ganji Puka warrior crew, you know, any of his flight lieutenant. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think they'd want them to see them bailing off the bridge <laughs> given time. No, wait, you come back. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> Um, but I do understand that we've all got our, you know, busy lives. That's why we record this and I try and edit it and put it up on here. And that's what I was just saying is that broke the computer again this week. But we've got through it. We've got some more videos put up on the old Mental Health Monday YouTube channel. There it is. I managed to get it uploaded just in time today. But it's there. And we did a little, little few little bits about the twisties and Lewis Hamilton. And today we're going to talk about express yourself. Let's go back to Madonna. Where's that gone? Madonna, express yourself. Let's, let's do the... The rundown, the lowdown from the high ground, <laughs> from the moral high ground. <laughs> the lowdown from the moral high ground, <laughs> from up on the moral horse. Uh, what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about uh, expression. Tonight we are covering my chat about a weird weekend call. Oh, someone called me up at the weekend. It was a bit weird. I talk about it. Tell you why should you express yourself? Why? Why should you express yourself? Madonna famously encouraged us to, but why? Why should we? What happens when you don't? We're going to look at that. We're going to look at different methods and ideas of expressing ourselves. Because it's not always easy. It's not always easy. Sometimes we don't even know what it is we want to say. You know, sometimes we don't even know. We, we, you know, we don't. It's, it's not always easy. And we're going to finish on a brief look at identity. What? That's different. Identity. Should have put these words up on the screen, shouldn't I? To, I could edit that <laughs> later. Oh God, don't talk to me about editing this week. I've had enough of it. I don't want to sit in front of the old telly screen editing. I'm happier talking to you. The more I talk to you, the more I have to... You know, we're going to edit less, talk more. Uh, we're going to look at identity though. We're going to look at identity and why. Why would we look at identity when we're talking about expression? Well, it all kind of ties in, doesn't it? It kind of ties in. The things we choose to express. You know, the parts of our identity that we want to bring out. And, Exposed to the world, I don't know, it all kind of plays in, doesn't it? So, I thought we'd have a little look at that at the end, depending on time, time allowing. But first, the Lewis Hamilton story because <laughs> you love it when I talk about Lewis Hamilton all the time. But the Lewis Hamilton story must come to a close for us here on Mental Health Monday, and it must come to a close with this remarkable thing that I found out. Chuffing me, chuffing me, look, here we go. Lewis, ha this is we could call this, we could call this, we're going to do. 10 minutes of Lewis Hamilton and then we're going to move on to the rest of the expression but this week last week we talked about Lewis Hamilton and his mental health we suggested he might be having mental health struggles and look he is 
we're going to call this bit Lewis Hamilton confirmed confirmed mental health panic attack confirmed because we suggested we thought he was having a panic attack confirmed he is having a hard time uh, well this wasn't confirmed oh, what's Scotty Hotty doing here look he thought it was 10th of the 7th like 10th of August but it's that's not even that's tomorrow that's tomorrow's news how have we got tomorrow's news no it's the other way around isn't it it's the 7th I don't know I got look, I got confused anyway. This is old news. It's a month old. <laughs> There's a nice picture of him there. He's getting out of his car. But the point being, he put a thing on Instagram, right? He put a thing on Instagram, and it said, "I too am having a hard time." They've they've here they've made it seem like he's penned this heartfelt message on mental health, which he kind of has. But he it really it came as this. There's the post. Look, this Instagram thing. If there's anybody out there struggling right now. I just want to. I just want you to know you're not alone. This is nice mental health Monday, isn't it? I should say it's in a nice voice. If there's anybody out there struggling right now, I just want you to know you're not alone. Good one, Lewis. You know. And then, before I get on and say the rest of what Lewis said, I'm such a chuffer, aren't I? I didn't look into it deeply. I didn't like do the research. Lewis Hamilton mental health and find out all the articles and things. He has talked about it. So I've been on there saying, oh, Lewis Hamilton should talk about Lewis his mental health and it's building up. Well, he has talked, but he's not. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, uh, we'll see in a minute about how he's hasn't hasn't approached it. But he, I've got to say, you know, I'm in the wrong here a little bit. He's done a lot of good stuff for mental health. So let's look into this a little bit. You're not alone. I too am having a hard time, but I know we're going to get through this. You have so much potential in you. You may not even be aware of. You've so much to give to the world. You're special and unique. There's nobody like you, no matter what anybody says. Be bold, be strong, be you. You're beautiful in every way. Let's be great together. Hope our paths cross someday in this life or the next. I'm sending you love and light and positivity for your weekend. So by the end, it seems a bit like generic. <laughs> I thought he was going to talk about his actual things that he was struggling with and what it was. But he just says, yeah, I'm having a hard time too. And I, I'm like you, you're like me, we're together, we're in it together. I get it. It might be marketing or it might be, you know, a really heartfelt statement of mental health struggle. I, it, I lean more on the mental health side of things, you know, heartfelt side with Lewis because, and we're going to go on to see here, look. He's done these things. <laughs> Lewis and the Renaissance. Where's Lewis and the Renaissance? I've got that in a different window. Right there. there we are. This is Lewis's... It's a charity that he set up, the Lewis Hamilton Foundation. And uh, it it could just be like a tax tax thing, couldn't it? <laughs> see, if I can't see Hobbs, I can't see if I'm leaning over out of the shot like that. Um, it might be a tax. <laughs> might be for tax purposes. But no, he has. He's done this, uh, this charity and they're talking about le legacy, mental health. They're talking to people in communities about mental health you know it's a really good thing and um, there's these videos on youtube about lewis talking about it there's like a 10 20 minute one here from mercedes catching up with him about positive thinking keeping mentally healthy uh self-belief positive mindsets so in one aspect i think he's done a lot of good work which i'm absolutely happy with great i don't think it's deeply core personal to him i haven't looked into it Again, you know, no, no, I should have should have watched all of these, shouldn't I, before I could make a statement. But what I'm saying is that I think right now he's struggling with the panic, and it's kind of ironic in a way, isn't it? Because he has done this talking about it, this raising the awareness, uh, this uh, at the end of this article on this confusing website. It says, Formula One has often been viewed as a sport of ultra-masculinity and the topic of mental health has most of the time been snubbed. But in recent times, an open discourse over it is started by the current grid drivers. Lando Norris, the McLaren superstar, after his second season, wrote a blog about his mental health state during his rookie year and how difficult it was for him to overcome. I did look into that. I tried to look at the blog. Then it took me to another article, another article, another article. But yeah, so overall, we're going to close the, the, the book on our Lewis Hamilton videos <laughs> by saying, yes, absolutely, look, he is doing good work for mental health. I hope it's not... I hope he realises that the things he's going through right now, the stresses and pressures that we raised in the previous videos, look, that's down there if you... Look, there you are. Ooh, it's got a nice thumbnail, doesn't it? Colourful. And I, I hope he realises that that is exactly in that ballpark of the things he's been talking about and raising awareness of and can benefit from. So yeah, Lewis Hamilton confirmed. That's what we're going to call that. Confirmed. Lewis Hamilton, panic attack confirmed. 
I mean, it might be. Yeah, I think it, I think it is, isn't it? And we're not going to beat him up over it. He's done such good work. I'm praising him. That's what we're here to do. Praise him today. Well done, Lewis. I'm happy with that. I just think he now needs to talk about what's happening to him now. Oh, you know, these chest tightenings and lightheadedness and dizzy spells and, you know, after the race spells. I think these things need to be looked at in the context of mental health. But yeah, good job, Lewis. Mm. Look at that. Congratulating myself with a great big slug on the old chocolate soy milk. I'm just going to drink the whole thing of that tonight. The whole thing, the whole litre. And then maybe, maybe start on the next one, maybe. <laughs> I mean, that sort of frame, of frame of mind. Well done, Lewis. So that's Lewis Hamilton watch <laughs> on Mental Health Monday. That's Lewis Hamilton watch. <laughs> right. Go back to Madonna. It's time for my little chat. Got to make sure I stay, stay on camera. If I lean over over here, I go off the... Can't see my face. I'll stay over here. Better stay over here. <laughs> hope it's loud enough. Hope the microphone's working okay. Hope everything's good. Tonight we're covering expression. That's what we're really covering. And I was going to do a little chat about my... So my friend called me. <laughs> so it was like 11 o'clock. It was Saturday. I wasn't out. I was in. I was in. I tell you what I was actually doing. What was I actually doing? Saturday at 11 o'clock. Might have been grinding some Fortnite even. I was about to cook some food. That's what I was going to do. I had the pan out. And I had the... Uh, the I don't want to... They're like plant-based bacon strips, but they're not bacon. I don't know why they try and make everything like bacon. I don't know why they try and do it. Maybe it's a thing. I don't know. But I'm quite happy that things just taste nice and they are what they are. But they always had these plant-based bacon strip things. <laughs> not promoting plant-based bacon strips that's not what we're talking about i was trying to get them fried up in the old frying pan at 11 o'clock at night on a saturday as you do and uh the phone call buzzed up it was one of my friends and i thought this is a bit strange isn't it to be calling me at this time of night so i better answer because people don't often call me <laughs> and when they do at the best of times you know i don't I, but I, thought, I better answer so i answered and said, hello and he just <laughs> started talking I know this is weird. I know this is strange. He said, "It's, I just, I know, it's a bit out of the blue." Uh, he explained that he'd been out with his brothers and been doing some drinking. So immediately, I cottoned on <laughs> to what was going on here. There was a bit of a uh, drunken rambling going to take place, and I was going to be on the end. And in the end, my bacon went cold. <laughs> the rambling happened. I never got my sandwich done. Uh, about forty minutes of conversational rambling. It was interesting. It was nice. So I'm not going to say it was bad, but. Uh, my bacon did get put on hold. It was one of them. My bacon got put on hold. But uh, one of the things that was said to me that I liked, <laughs> I could say nice things to me, I like him, uh, by my friend, was that, because he's known me a long time over the years, he said that one of the things he liked about me was that I was authentic to... How do I explain this? Well, I explained it the way he explained it. So when we were young, we got into like Rage Against the Machine, you liked Rage Against the Machine because you felt something in the music that you identified with. And we went to see Rage Against the Machine together. And I, he felt these same feelings. And I think I think he does. I, mean, I think this is what he was trying to explain. And and it was about a connection. Like For me, going to see Rage Against the Machine was like a religious experience. <laughs> it was a connection with the music that was created and my soul and the, the thing. And, and I, I wasn't there to buy a T-shirt. No, I wasn't there to take my selfie. I was there to completely lose myself in the moment, in the experience, and also find part of myself in it as well, because that's where I live, that's where I'm alive. Uh, that was Rage Against the Machine. And then he was describing drum and bass and like other forms of music. And the same sort of context, that I love drum and bass because I love drum and bass. I love the way the, the bass sounds, the high music. I do these physical <laughs> I feel like the bass is big and blue and when you're stood in the, the arena and that's blasting out it's flowing out from these deeper end of the speak like this big blue wave and the rattle tattle on top of the and the, you're, whoa, 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 whoa. Like you're swimming through this being buoyed on the the wave I mean it is physical energy isn't it I suppose the waves of the music yeah, I wonder if there's something in that. But I'm being buoyed along. I, I just, it, there's something about drum and bass that I feel like a primal connection with. And he was saying that uh, 
he asked back in the day when we were younger like he said you know what is it about drumbeat can you explain to me why it's good and how i should enjoy it and i said to him that no i can't you just got to come to a rave and just experience it and if you feel it and understand it then you feel it and understand it and if you don't then you know maybe go to a different music venue and enjoy something else uh, and he did and he did and you know it was through those experiences that we bonded as well so uh, his point was that I didn't want to become a DJ because I wanted to be on the stage in front of the people and signing the autographs. I was a DJ because the love of the music meant that I had to play those records in my house. I had to learn to mix them. I wanted to hear, uh, I you know, look at records and see them not as individual pieces, but as parts of the, the mix that I could create. It's like seeing things in your fridge, not as uh, individual packages of food but as a sandwich you know it's it's that um so that sort of thing and he was reminding me of who i was essentially that was what i wanted to make the point of this this drunken rambling phone call it actually reminded me of who i was and i reminded him that some of that authenticity <laughs> Some of that brutally being myself, regardless of what other people thought, not caring what other people thought, just brutally being myself, even if it was sometimes brutal. Um, I reminded him that he kind of came from a place of dysfunction and pain and chaos and that maybe some people who uh, had a, a more smooth, more um, nuclear family nine, nine to five upbringing no arguments, no dysfunction, no rage. You know, maybe they didn't connect with these things in the same way as I did because it was just, you know, that's that was my form of connection with expression, wasn't it? That was what was happening, I suppose. And it wasn't always good for me and it didn't lead to a like completely positive outcome. But, you know, he was, he, he, on one aspect, he was saying, oh, well, I'm just boring now. I've just got like the house and the kids and uh, I just go to the job and, you know, I just do the, the the day to day grind because I know I have to do it and it's normal and it's it's, it's, it's it's he was saying it's good you know he loved his kids and he's like his house and his nice things but he missed that um, like the way we used to behave if we wanted like he missed that ability to just jump in the car and go to the rave or say all right this weekend we're going to just go and do this or you know I've got two tickets for that or I really like this new band let's go and watch them or do you know what I mean like this passion for things this passion for life that uh, <laughs> you know maybe these ideas come to him when he's having his one or two nights out of the year that he's <laughs> but that's what he was sort of saying and that I represented to him that like that manifest that going after the things that I wanted to and I, I had to agree with him as well like you know in later years now we did the ASMR not because I thought ASMR was going to be popular on YouTube <laughs> You know, it was an, an anathema to me that ASMR became popular on YouTube. I couldn't, I was a bit surprised by that. But uh, I did it because I loved it and I wanted to be part of it and do it and had ideas about how it could be done. So I just had to do it. You know, when it was weird and different, I don't care. I just I get interested in it. I want to do it. You know, I, I find ways of expressing myself through things that maybe are a bit different and I'm not afraid to go and have a go at them and, and try them and see if they fit for me so maybe there's something in that so that was chat time <laughs> that's chat time about me and expression we're going to talk all about expression tonight so uh, also i was listening to a podcast and i've got to name the person but i'm scared to <laughs> i hope he'll agree if he ever hears me talking about this but uh, i was listening to the podcast with sean atwood who i think is great and also brian g who is a scary, reformed, I say scary, like he'll understand why I'm saying this. He's a reformed criminal and he's quite a live wire. And, uh, you know, he, he could do me in a fight, <laughs> like, hands down, hands down. I'm not, you know, I'm not going to be picking up the soy milk and bashing him on the head. He could do me. But, uh, and he's, he's quite, quite um, quick to jump on things where he feels people are being offensive to him. So I'm definitely not. Let's just clear. <laughs> if Brian G ever hears this, the podcast man, the reformed criminal on the criminal podcasts, if he ever hears me talking about him, I'm not being offensive to him. Okay, I'm definitely not. We've got that clear. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but he was talking about art as an expression. 
was really interesting. He was talking about his mental health and art as an expression. And he was, he was also saying that when he completes something, it makes him feel good in himself. And that with art, you can, you know, set out to do something like create a, an art piece and finish it. And then you feel good about it. I don't finish a lot of my work, but yeah, I, <laughs> I think he uh, he's nailed something there. Um, and he also talked about his artwork he's he's come from a place of a lot of pain a lot of dysfunction as well and he's ended up painting very vibrant very um, tribal sort of images and there's a lot of abstract in there as well and it's interesting to me that the expression comes out in this colorful vibrant way it's not what you might expect but then when you think about his character more it's not just he's not just a, ca a product of the bad things that have happened he's also himself who's a bubbly vibrant up for it you know fun p person as well and that is in there as well so there's a lot of there was a lot in that i was just thinking about it and i wanted to sort of reference <laughs> hello brian g uh i hope you won't get offended if i call him a mad scouser i don't mean mad in, you know we talk about mental health here aren't we mental health monday so i don't mean mad in a derogatory mental health way but in a sort of you know wild way <laughs> a wild scouser i should say i hope you won't get offended at, at that because that's you know it's meant with love that's what i'm trying to say and he's got a message that he's promoting about knives the concept is save a life put down a knife i might have got the wording slightly wrong and this is why i'm worried because if you get the words wrong he gets cross but uh put no knife save life principle good good message so that got me thinking about art and expression this week and what also happened you know, those, that's like a little perfect storm. So you're Scotty Hottie. You put down the phone. It's midnight now. You haven't had your bacon sandwich. It's not bacon. It's plant-based. I mean, it looks like strips of plant-based. It doesn't look like bacon. <laughs> You've gone off it. It's gone cold. You've given a piece to the dog. He's not really interested either. So it's that's gone. But you've had this this conversation about who you really are in your soul and this expression and... I've always, I've never been successful with music. I've just made it because I wanted to. Uh, the The music is on my. Um, I'm not here to promote it. We'll promote it another time. I'll just mention it that uh, it's on. Battery exhausted. Big Valley is there. Some of the strafe rapping is there. I've done a lot more before that. I did a band when I was younger. That we did a CD and we won Battle of the Bands and you know songs I wrote were on that. Uh, it's happened all the way along my life that I've tried to construct and create, whether it be media. Obviously, you've seen a lot of the media and some of the true by normal stuff I've tried to push into the art sphere and some of it maybe is not that... I don't know. I'm not going on about it all. <laughs> but uh, what it, what happened to me was that I had to... Uh, I had some songs that I've thought on the top of my... There's one that I've sort of basically completed. I finished it. I never did the video for it. I had this idea for the video for it. And then I was like, it's too complicated to make this music video. I'm just going to put that on the back burner. Because I know what the music video needs to look like. I just can't execute it now because it costs too much money and it's too complicated. So that's on the back burner. It's there. And I just thought, why don't I grab that song and then get it on the internet? Maybe just do a lyric video because it's there. The song's finished. When I tried to find it, I couldn't find the chuffer. <laughs> it was on my old iTunes, the finished version, like the, ex the finished final final mix down and then i don't have my old itunes and when i logged into the old itunes everything's gone and like I, my old phone isn't i don't have that anymore it's my sister's phone i've got now like the hand-me-down so i don't have that so i, don't, I was like where is this I thought i had it somewhere I've got the old uh, backup hard drive and i have got the the full logic file I've got the full logic file but there's a plugin that i was using called elephant that makes everything sound big like an elephant really good it is but i wasn't paying the money for it i was pirate <laughs> I was a naughty pirate. This is a while ago, so, you know, you can't come and get me. But it was a while ago. I was a naughty pirate, and I had it for free, I think. Well, anyway, the point being, it doesn't work. <laughs> so now I can't mix it down because it doesn't sound proper. And then I tried last night. I had a full go at it, and then I was like, listen, I'm mixing it through these headphones. Maybe I should... Then I was out the telly, and then I was like, oh, I need to get the big speakers. I'm not getting the big speakers. So I got waylaid with that. Didn't work out. But then I dug through... It's got the hard drive. I've got the old hard drive out with the old songs, the backup files. I, d I went through it, and there's some things in there that I still feel deserve being finished. That's a better way to explain it. 
and uh, I've got this machine that we bought through your patron dollar that I can plug the microphones into so it got me working on a bit of music I did a little bit of you know opening up files doing a bit of mixing recording some stuff got this microphone it's right here <laughs> did a bit got a couple of things actually polished off got two maybe three things that we're going to release this week if I can get my head around how to do the video or at least I can expose you to them through the stream so that was interesting good stayed up really late working on music expression yeah expression and it was good it was good and uh, oh yeah that's what we're coming around to that's what we're coming around to then I thought for this one song because it's a soft soft song I thought I was going to use images of Navin my old dog and uh I've got these videos that we took of when he was getting older and especially his last day because we had that horrid story of how he bit me and I had to get him put down. <laughs> it's not, it sounds silly when I say it like that, but it was, you know, anyway, been through a long, hard road with this rescue dog who had bitten me on several occasions. But it, at the end, it became clear that he'd had a long, hard life and it was time, you know, it was time. When I watched this video back as well, I've got my arm all bandaged up because I've just recently had the trauma and I'm giving him a cuddle and, you know, not wanting to get my face in his face. <laughs> you know, I'm a little bit timid myself as well, but I can see in his eyes, you know, I can see in the, the image of the dog. It's not the dog that I remember, the lively, you know, the boy. It, it's this old, his, his face was so sag. And when I looked at it, I, I realised that, you know, he realised that was his last day. And it was, and I, I remember thinking at the time when he bit me that he was trying to communicate to me, to express himself, that something was severely, you know, not I, I i imagine if we'd done exploratory surgery he would have had some sort of you know he was a really old dog he was blind in one eye and i imagine something would have been not right inside and this was his way of saying something's hurting and you know maybe it's time so i, I watched that and i was going to try and edit it into a music video <laughs> and i realized that part of what i was writing about and recording about and all that was the pain of that but really the songs aren't about that dog they're not they were about something else and I was just trying to find something to put images to it that I felt sympathetically fit with it. But anyway, the point being, it made me really not upset and, you know, felt down, didn't I? Because I was looking at images of of the thing that made me upset. And it was in vivid colour, you know. Yeah, in vivid colour. I, I don't know. How how do you explain that any better than that? You don't need to do that's enough. I've lost chat. Oh, why did I just do that? I clicked the windows just to check everything was working and I've lost chat come back chat you're my favorite you're my favorite you can go over there you're my favorite so it's good this little lead up i'm going to release those tracks on a different name on it i think what i really want is for them to just be exposed to the world i'm not i haven't got any marketing i haven't got any promotion i haven't got any of that i'm not gonna so it's not gonna go anywhere it needs in today's modern world you need at least some hype train on the internet. You don't, you know, you need at least some exposure, sharing, people getting into it. You need to do some public performances. You need some people paying your money to go on a tour to, you know, get them that end. And you can, that's not where it's going. I just wanted it to be exposed to, you know, so it's out there uh, and to be judged on what it is, not on who I am or anything else like that. So I don't know if I need to do music videos for it, but maybe there's this other part of me that wants to, it's a complete piece of art, isn't it? It's a music and a video. And I'm a person who works in media, so how am I not making it a complete piece of art? Part of me does that, but then it holds back the music anyway. Expression. Expression. Why is it important that I get to finish these things? And why is it important that I play the music? That's what we'll talk about now. Why is it important? Why is it important? This is giant isn't it it's big it's not not big like where you can see the it's just big <laughs> should you go to web browser is that better yeah, there you go nine really bad things that happen to your health when you avoid feeling your emotions right <laughs> i just went on a bit of a ramble there but it was a ramble about expressing myself and music and how i'm feeling and why this mental health monday is like it is and maybe we should have done all about Kurt Cobain and uh, Ian from Joy Division. Ian Curtis. You know, maybe I should have brought him up instead of just talking about what happened to me at the weekend. 
but uh, <laughs> you know, you get the gist. You get the gist. This is. I'll wake up a bit now, and we'll do what happens to your health when you avoid feeling your emotions, and then we will talk about. Then we will talk about good ways to express yourself. We might even find some interesting ones, and I'm going to be looking at you. <laughs> I'm going to be looking at you to suggest some. So wakey wakey. 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 It's, I was, before we do, actually, before we do, I'll go back to my little talk about me for a minute because there's something I wanted to say. We're going to talk about identity at the end. We're going to talk a little bit about it at the end. And what I was just describing, this this thing that was related to me by my friend, I felt like I got off the path a little bit. And if you come to me now, right, and you first new meeting of Scotty Hottie, it used to be that the first new meeting of Scotty Hottie for you would have been ASMR, isn't it? Like when when you first met me for the majority of you. For a lot of people who know me from way back, that wasn't, you know, ASMR doesn't even come into it. It was Scotty Hottie. <laughs> but now the first thing you meet of me is Mental Health Monday, isn't it? And it it's kind of building. I'm kind of doing it the most consistent thing. But this isn't my expression of my my feelings and my art and, you know, the things I wish were successful, <laughs> wish for validation on. I don't know. You know, this, this isn't my... Uh, uh, my campaign even this is just a little corner of the internet that I want to share with you once a week to make sure that we're you know, holding out hands across the world to improve mental health and you know if for some reason it seems to be the most consistent thing in my life at the moment so yeah I, I need I need inside me oh that was the other thing I was going to say I need inside me to get back to some form of expression we're going to talk about it we're going to talk about ways and i've got my songs here i was going to i'm rigging up the i i did a whisper uh piece it, i don't think it's good enough to go on asmr channel but i did a you know my first asmr thing on that creative weekend as well and i've also done a little whispery rap thing that hasn't got a rap on it yet but <laughs> I did start whispering again. It did, it did start just coming out of me because I'm sat in here. It was night time. It was like two in the morning. I've got the microphone. I've got the little desk thing. I've got the microphones. And I it just, you know, it just started happening. So that was interesting. You know, maybe I won't promise anything these days, but, you know, stay tuned for more. Right. Why you need to express yourself. I've got that. That was Lewis. That can go. Bye bye, Lewis. Bye bye, Lewis. How to express yourself. We're going to do that in a minute. Cultural identity, wait, 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 that's Madonna. This is, uh, here we are. Really bad things that happen to your health. Oh, I haven't done the Samaritans. Always do Samaritans. It's too late. If, you, <laughs> if you're coming to Mental Health Monday, what's this dude doing chuffing on all the time? Why isn't he talking about crisis things? I'm at a crisis point. There's Samaritans. You can talk to us in chat, but this is Samaritans. And there's an American one called Lifeline as well. Lifeline. These are really, they're really, you know, don't, don't underestimate what the chuff, why don't you just go straight to it? We've looked at it like a million times. Lifeline. Uh, there you are, look. Don't underestimate these resources. They're free and they could really help you. That's an American telephone number. You can tell. It's got hyphens. Right. Piece of, and so now I'm going to scare you with really bad things that can happen to your health, but don't, don't let this fuel your anxiety. <laughs> this is just like us chilling. We're going to not do this because we're going to express ourselves. But we're just going to talk about and show why it's important. And I wanted to bring this up because they've correlated. Uh, there was a couple of scientific studies done. I think there was one done at Harvard about five years ago. I looked into them. They're, they're you know, valid and it it's real. So number one, mental exhaustion. Ignore the adverts. There's going to be loads of them. I can't get rid of them on this website. One, mental exhaustion. Oh, that's a video. That is a video. It's not an advert. It's, it's this guy talking about what we're talking about. Imagine him, but it's me. It is me. Right. Suppressing an emotion can involve suppressing the memory of something that's made you feel uncomfortable. However, you cannot actually forget a memory on purpose. So in order to avoid thinking about something you don't want to remember, your mind will work overtime. So you get mentally exhausted if you try and keep these things in that you want to not think about. We talk about distraction, so that's cool. But maybe expressing the things, getting them out in these other ways, 
that we're going to look at how to do in just a minute maybe expressing them it it kind of wipes that clean it gets it purges it in a way it removes the power the power's locked up inside you when it's in there like a lead weight dragging you down when you let it out it it doesn't have that 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 weight on you so much anyway it's it's hard to explain and this is the point of expression today is that it's really hard to explain that's why expression is so difficult and why we find so many interesting and varied ways to achieve it and why when you start which we will look at in a minute how to when you start doing it you you know it's it's like going to a well and at first you think well water's all the way down there and like (laughs) what is even you know just but once you start winching up the buckets and you start getting wet (laughs) it's a totally different experience like you become maybe free-flowing maybe the well becomes a spring yeah it's really interesting expression uh so you get mentally exhausted if you keep it in stomach problems according to research from harvard see told you stress from unacknowledged emotions and this is an important terminology unacknowledged emotions so things that you feel but you don't sort of say to yourself oh yeah absolutely i'm feeling that maybe you say to yourself no i'm not feeling that no i'm not i'm not down i'm not sad i'm not scared (laughs) Uh, but it can lead to digest digestion gas you know stomach ulcers stomach problems like physical physical problems headaches and migraines again physical in response to emotional stress the muscles in your forehead and brow tighten oh cross stronger negative emotions and this is where it gets a bit more difficult to explain but easy to see when it's happening when someone lets their feelings build up and then they explode and they get angry and rah and they're really angry about this or really stressed about that uh, it might be because they're releasing pent-up emotion, says clinical psychologist Victoria Tarot. Weight gain or loss, we're going to say. Any issues with food and weight, we're going to say. We're going to, uh, but they say food can be a temporary band-aid for a real problem. But we've looked at men- mental health and eating disorders, so we know it's not just gain, it's also weight loss. Difficulty experiencing the positive things in life. When you try to experience less sadness and anger, you're limiting the range of emotions you can experience. This includes positive feelings like joy and happiness. You can't have the positive without riding out the negative. That's interesting, isn't it? You know, people say, oh, you, you know, things look better after they put things in balance. You need the ups to have the downs and the downs to have the ups or whatever. But they're saying here, you can't have positive experience without getting through the negative. Fair enough. We want the positive experience if we're feeling down. We need to ride through the negative. And often, what they're saying here, ride, riding out the negative, often finding a way to express it or working through things with expression, which we're going to look at in a minute, how to. That is our way of riding it out. That's our surfboard on the wave. You know, that's our Wilson, Wilson. That's our raft, isn't it? So, Increased cancer risk. That's bad. Everything these days, isn't it? Everything is that. Everything. So... <laughs> but no we yeah absolutely mental health shorter lifespan in general well if you're going to have increased cancer risk and you've got difficulty experiencing positive things and strong negative emotions yeah absolutely you can see why that's going to shorten your lifespan so we don't want to go there that's the bad place ink magazine <laughs> bad place <laughs> bye <laughs> what we do want to do is how to express yourself now look this is google right this is google and below are four tips now this is the ineffectiveness of google i've asked it a really straightforward question i'm just going to go on my little high horse rant again now look if you're not going to chat i'm going to turn you off (laughs) if you're not going to chat i'm going to just i can do that chat window capture i'll tell you why i'll tell you why because now when i edit it people are going to just not know what's going on but if they uh if they saw that no one was chatting they think oh look no one's chatting oh (laughs) No, they don't have to think that. Only I I see that now. And you. It doesn't matter because everyone's busy all the time. And, you know, we're just doing what we do. And we edit it and it goes up on YouTube. So it's all good. So it's all good. But if you do want to chat, you know, feel free. You don't have to. You don't even have to tune in at 8 p.m. GMT, do you? You don't even have to. <laughs> Cost you nothing. Cost you nothing. You get me talking this. It's nice. It's nice. Right. (laughs) 
Oh, look, I've, I've provoked chat. Now I've got to switch it back on. I shouldn't have done that because now I've got to work out how to do it. Boom. Right. And now I've got to concentrate on what you're saying. <laughs> shouldn't have done that. <laughs> let's uh, let's shuffle it. There you go. <laughs> Popped in to say I'm so sad that I can't watch it until after work today. Mental exhaustion is so relatable. Please tell the chuffers to be more careful out of during this pandemic. Oh, those chuffers in the pandemic. Oh, you don't even know. want to get me started on that this week. I, I didn't. I haven't had pandemic sadness this week. I haven't factored that into my week sadness. I've been doing past grief sadness and working through of unresolved emotions. <laughs> but yeah, I absolutely thank you, thank you. I appreciate that. That's you know, the the cheers mean massive. Uh, they make me feel like it's going somewhere. <laughs> and I do appreciate. You know, I, I, the reason I edit it and I care care to edit it and get it up onto youtube in a nicer format because i appreciate you can't always be here live and it is it is uh you know it's there is legacy isn't it it's there is legacy now it's there is legacy we'll leave that up. we'll leave you we'll leave you up on on there saying nice things <laughs> they're not wearing masks oh, in, in our country it's been i'm gonna do big face for a second just to you know i'll, I'll you I agree with you a million percent and it's it's happened that way as well we're just going for this sort of chuff it then <laughs> approach just chuff it then it's like I'll tell you what it is and this is a way maybe of helping I know you're going to have a really hard hard series of shifts and it's going to only going to compound isn't it the, the figures are baked into next week and the week after but it's almost as if people are, are too like you're exhausted like they're exhausted of being able to hold this concept in their mind the whole time like imagine if uh, <laughs> the way i think about it imagine if we were on a submarine and you're not allowed to open the door because the water is going to come in you're not allowed to do that after about six months some chuffer gets up and starts tinkering with the door what are you doing no you can't open it the water's going to come in yeah but i'm bored of being in the submarine now can we not just go out? And then after about a year, they're just, they're up again opening the door. <laughs> they're what's going to come in, you chuffer. And they, they, they can't, it's like they've been in the submarine so long that they just, I can't take it anymore. I have to open this door. Do you know what I mean? And like people do go a bit mad, don't they? And do a bit like just open the door and kill us all. Uh, it's not as bad as it being in the submarine. We're not all going to drown. It's not as bad. But there is a bit of that. And I, to be honest, I kind of feel it now that, uh, I understand it that it's um it's hard to ask so much of people and what you do snippy snips is extraordinary anyway <laughs> so like you've already got a baseline of like extraordinary and when people in general are not even able to come up to ordinary it's like this isn't good enough but hey it's just it is isn't it it's just people like we're lucky we got this far in a way aren't we <laughs> we're lucky we got this far when you look back in 10 years time when you look back in 10 years' time, uh, we will find a way of, you know, thinking, fuffing, chuff. I mean, I'm saying this, I've lost love people, so I'm not laughing about it, but, you know, it's, at some point, you've got to just, you know, I can't, I can't express it any better. You see, my two expressions there, I can't express it any better than that, except to say, well, just chuff it, you know, chuff it. You know, at least uh, it could be worse marginally only marginally <laughs> and on on the po another positive at least there is now um some protection you know we've pushed i think there has to be this balance of saying we push as hard as we can for the the, the vaccines and the protections and the uh, good advice and everything and then we leave it in the hands of the people and we do eventually like uh, how do i put this in another way sometimes a treading dog poo right <laughs> sometimes a treading dog poo and i don't always get cross i know it's it's horrible it's on my shoe it's not mine i pick up my dog's poo i just think it's fucking chuffing dog poo you know i live in this world with chuffers who don't pick up their chuffing dog poo and i let it go don't i, I you get i have to clean the chuffing shoe i have to clean the chuffing shoe but we we just live with these things don't we would like to live with this is why they say live with covid is what they meant was we we're not politicians top politicians when they say we're going to live with covid what they mean is we haven't got the answers we're just human beings and we got elected not to sort out covid but because we were going to do some business tax thing with our mates so <laughs> this is out of our hands <laughs> you know it's uh, it's been so long now that i've uh i've managed to get used to these things but i can see where people have reached their breaking points 
and it just maybe I have as well in a way maybe my attitude with it this week trying to you know taking care of babies in the ICU that can't be vaxxed yeah so you know I can't make jokes about that even you know that would just destroy me also yeah this week um, there's been news stories in the BBC it seems to be I don't know if it's the BBC have been doing this more I'm just doing chat now we're just having a chat you can get your mental health in a minute <laughs> Uh, but this is part of it is that this week the news uh, in our country a number of people have hurt their children basically beat them to death and it, like not one or two but like four or five different parts of the country you know these horrible stories are coming out in the news this week this lady's been arrested because of child's and then it find out oh this is what's happening. and I'm like when I read these things it actually sickens me and then I'm reading them, and I'm reading them, and I'm looking at it, and you're in there taking care of it, and I, yeah, so uh, you're ready to burn out. I, I get it, yeah, I get it. At least, at least we get it. At least we know what's going on, eh? <laughs> Supposed to be the font of all mental health advice here, but at least we know what's going on, and at least you can see it for what it is. And this is a question. I really want to have answered, so I don't have the answer to this. The answer, the answer. I say the answer, you say the answer. <laughs> um, but I wanted to start a podcast <laughs> so that I could ask people this one question. Is the world so chuffing horrible? How do you get on with it? Like, how do you not, how does that not break you on a daily basis? How does it not prevent you from moving forward? And people just do, don't they? They battle through it. So, like I commend you. We have a system of like honours in our country that posh people get for doing nice things, and I, like you know, you deserve a medal. It's not like just an expression, is it? Like you're going through it and you're fighting for on our behalf. I don't live in America, so I'm not going through a hospital, but it's a principle. So you know, think of the medals, <laughs> not medals, but the respect that society I, I can say it I can vote yeah it's expression we're talking about expressing today I can express it respect and admiration and thanks and gratitude because if it wasn't for people like you doing your jobs then we'd all be fucked <laughs> no swearing but I, I'm really grateful for it so you have that and it doesn't I can't you know I can't tippy you in chippy coins to make it uh, I couldn't afford I couldn't afford it I haven't got the money to uh to quantify the same value of my gratitude like not just to you but to the people in the nhs to the nurses to the people who push the beds around to the people who have to clean up to the people who uh drive the things with the organs on the back like to, to anybody involved in any part of the the chain that's gone to work because they thought you know what i could make the world a little bit better you know that uh, it, it it's yeah, it's more valuable. Like I said last week, you can't put it in Bitcoin, but if you could, I, I, you know, I believe that it is more valuable than that. So you have my, um, I'm out here saying it on the internet that I, I, I see it. Yeah, I see you. Real, recognise real. I see you. <laughs> you know, that's the best I can say. Thank you. Thank you for that. Yeah. Okay. Right. This is what I was going to say about Google. I have a little rant about this. Four tips to effectively express yourself. But they're just four tips. And then all of this other stuff on Google is like, how to express your writing better. Do you need Grammarly? Did you not go to school? Did you not listen in school when they taught you about the difference between there and there? Do you not know the difference between greater and fewer than? Greater than and more. More and less. Less and fewer. Do you not... Do you not know that H is is spelt with an A I C H instead of a H? You need Grammarly. It's like an app that means if you didn't go to school, you can just pay so that no one can notice how ignorant you are. And that shouldn't be allowed. That shouldn't be allowed. You shouldn't get to pay your way out of it. It shouldn't be pay to win. Education shouldn't be pay to. Oh no, wait, hang on. Education pay to win. Private school. Boris Johnson. Oh. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, so anyway, the point I'm making is that Google just wants to sort of be like, look, you can even get the music video for um, Naughty naughty with Attitude. Um, <laughs> you can even get the music video for Express Yourself, but none of it is really what we're looking at in a mental health context. So we're not going to use the internet. We're just going to get a picture of Madonna. That's what we're going to look at. A picture of Madonna. 
Now I've got an itchy nose. Uh, you, you know that I've not been tinkering with anything. I'll tell you what it is. It's probably the cocoa in there. I had a friend who used to say, was it, was it a partner? That used to sneeze when they had chocolate. Somebody I used to know used to sneeze when they had chocolate. <laughs> and uh, I've got a, but I can't fiddle with my nose because it looks like I'm picking my nose. Because I'm online now. I'm on the internet. I'm live to the entire world. Should they choose to have a look? Look, I've done it now. I've done it. Oh, don't even... You wouldn't catch Philip Schofield doing that. <laughs> you wouldn't catch Philip Schofield. Right, I was going to make this video about naving, but I stopped, didn't I? I was, didn't, wasn't going to be me doing my editing about my dog to that music video. I stopped. I couldn't do it. It made me feel too sad. And that wasn't really what I wanted to express in the way. Maybe I wanted to look at it. Maybe my songs drew me to it. Maybe I was working out grief and I wanted to have another look. But I didn't want to edit it. <laughs> Couldn't dream it. I, I, put, I had to turn off the computer. But I did want to express myself. So let's look at ways to express yourself. Number one, and I've got, this is my notes now I'm reading. You get to look at Madonna. I read my notes, okay? Number one, talking to friends. We just did it a minute ago. Me and Snippy Snips, when Capital K was here earlier, we were talking to each other. It's friends. We're friends. We talk. You talk to your friends. My friend called me up. He was drunk and we were having a chat. That's what happened at the weekend that led to this. But it gets underestimated that talking to people is a form of expression. It's an easy, lucid, over coffee, don't even have to think too much. <laughs> If you're really good friends, then you don't have to worry even about the social cues and the, do you mind if I do? <laughs> Did you, <laughs> you know, you can just be yourself, can't you? And like, oh, you know, get me a beer. <laughs> I'm joking, I'm drinking soy chocolate milk, I don't drink beer. But, uh, the, <laughs> you know, you could just, that is expression of yourself. And it's your pure self without any filter. You're just talking to your friends. And quite often the things that come up can be the things that are important to you. And maybe the only people you'd really want to talk about some of these things with is your friends, or if it's me, my friends on the internet, everyone in the world. So that's number one, talking to friends. It's good, isn't it? Scott's top tips. <laughs> we might get through these tonight, and we might get on to a little bit about identity. Number two, art. Well, that's good. Glad we covered that. <laughs> Probably the first thing people think of is art. It's not just as simple as go and paint a picture of your feelings, though. Let's look at the different arts and how they can be cathartic. <laughs> Let's take a look. It's like a documentary, isn't it? No, I'm just going to read. You're going to listen. Enjoy. Number one, music. I'm not going to go through all the arts. I'm not going to... We're not... You, you get the gist already, don't you? But I am going to say some things that might spark a few ideas that might be a bit... I don't know. I just did some writing, so I might as well, eh? This is what your patron dollar gets you... <laughs> It is going to be worth it in the long run. We're going to really push forward with this. Number one, music. Music and mental health interests me because it can help on both ends of the spectrum. Some music can speak of your pain and rather than make it worse, it can help to label it, tie it to a concept and help you endure. Having something or someone place themselves in your pain through music lets you feel that out there someone gets it. Rather than wallowing in your own self-pity, though, it's about feeling and understanding feelings, so it's healthy. The music can lift you. Even if it's, like, rah, negative, <laughs> if it's speaking of those feelings, it can still lift you. That's a good point. What I wrote down. I want to blow my nose with them tissues. You always got to have tissues on the computer in case you need to blow your nose, haven't you? Well, that was an unwritten rule. Anyway, look. <laughs> so I've got to breathe yeah I'm alright I'm alright just a bit stuffy been out in the fields with all the grass seeds today music can lift you often when I miss someone I decide to listen to a sad song and feel the feelings then I actively select a happier song that will lift my mood and energise me I'm sure we've all got tunes that just make us want to dance so that's like a talk about music, isn't it? It's, it's nice. It's nice. How do you get into music? Well, there's two avenues. One is you go out and you listen to it. You put on your radio, you 
download it on your iTunes, you put it on your Walkman, you just listen to it, don't you? But I actually think that going out to an experience live, oh, the COVID, oh, that's chuffed that up. <laughs> I'm talking in generalities, not specifically about COVID times now. But experiencing live music is unique and primal. You could also get into... you. Uh, what was I going to say? I, I was talking about music production then. And just my notes have knocked my. How does that work? My notes have knocked my sense of thought process out. So that's good. Uh, but live music is amazing, isn't it? Whether you're going to see your favourite band or a DJ or a club, you might club life might be a bit different for different people. But that is. Uh, we're going to come on to that when we talk about dancing as well. But live music and hearing it live and experiencing it live is really special. So. I, that's cathartic in itself. So there's the aspect of music where it's not just that uh, music is... We're talking about expression. So going to hear other people express themselves, I know this sounds weird, but you can feel like you are expressing something too because you are identifying with and sharing a, a concept of expression. Maybe you sing along, maybe you dance. So. Going to see live music counts for me as part of expression. But you can also get involved, and back to my notes, you can also get involved in music production. My top tips here are to speak of that authenticity. We're not all going to be superstars, but if you can enjoy writing and you get pleasure from making these things exist, that can be a big win for your mental health. I write and compose guitar songs, and they just sort of... <laughs> I've got my guitar over there. The way it happens... I did a video on it once on the vlog is the way it happens is I just play the guitar, like riffing, playing things that sound like I feel, whether I'm upbeat or down you know, down low, whatever I'm feeling like, I play the guitar like it. And then from that comes some sort of structure, some sort of repeating theme. That I, I, that's the sound of how I'm feeling. Like that's it there. And then I write that down, F, C, D, A, or whatever it is, and I do it. And then the words are just there. They just sort of start to come. I don't have to sit down separately with a pad of paper and write down words that rhyme and think up what words can go where. While I'm playing the guitar, the words just start coming out of me. And they might start sounding like, oh, and this and that was all I knew. Or, you know, it might have a, a this and that in it first, but it very quickly crystallizes into a couple of key hook lines, the thing that I'm trying to say. Well, when I say trying to say, the thing that I'm trying to spill out of my mouth, I get all that down, and then I've only got two verses and a, a bridge to fill in. Sometimes the bridge is a bit more organic. Sometimes it's a bit more deliberate. You know, sometimes I have to. Sometimes, uh, sometimes I have to say, "We need another section in this song." Now it's time to do some some work writing it. But other than that, it's all organic and it all just happens. And I guess that's why it's the best expression of my inner feelings of my soul or whatever because I don't have to think and it's 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 what's just there in the well and I'm just bringing the water up and getting wet aren't I so yeah that's how I compose guitar songs but I don't imagine that I'm going to end up being like um George Michael or anyone <laughs> George Michael because Madonna's up there so it's the same era I don't imagine that's going to turn me into Madonna but for me, it's very cathartic. Uh, uh, what have I written here? Yeah, you get pleasure from making things exist. And what I mean by that is that you have these feelings and these ideas and you can create... Now that song exists. Now I've got a folder. And this is what I'm going to do for an ASMR video. I'm going to try. And, I'm going to try. It's nice, isn't it? A bit of a folder, a bit of a whisper through the folder got a folder of songs now that I've done and written that I've done songs what I've done and uh, yeah they exist they only exist in there at the moment but some of them exist on the internet now and some of them exist as recordings and yeah like they exist they'll exist long after I will so that's nice for me I guess both those things are cathartic. It, all right, I've also written here. I also rap, which is more of a cerebral process. Yeah, I sit down and write rap, write raps, <laughs> write raps. When I'm writing hip hop, when I'm writing lyrics in that context, bars, MCing, I do sit down with a pad of paper and the, the beat going and ideas coming and writing and thinking and maybe sometimes referencing in a book and, and writing. 
Uh, yeah, I do that more, more cerebral. But it's the performance of that that for me is more emotionally cathartic. So there's something in that. They're both different. They're, they're both different ways of, of me expressing feelings. I love to perform the rap and I get a buzz out of it. But my guitar stuff makes me feel too emotional to properly perform. I'm not a very good performer. I'm not a very good guitarist, maybe. I'm all right. But when I try and do it live and perform, I've got all these feelings attached to it, all these emotions, and I feel embarrassed and hot and uh, sad. And, you know, I, I, for me to sit and play my guitar is for me. It's not for the whole world to... Uh, I mean, it'd be nice. <laughs> it would be, it'd be lovely, wouldn't it, if you like... The whole world thought I was, you know, as good as Ed Sheeran or something like that. But then again, like I say, I'm not in a studio with a producer and a marketing team, am I? So I'm not going to be thought of in those ways. I'm not even going to be able to make my sound that, <laughs> that comparable. Got my little mixing thing here. Got my little computer. Got my little, you know, notepad, and I get it out there, don't I? I don't know. Yeah, it for me, it's too emotional. Anyway, that's the point I'm trying to make. And that's good because it's part of my cathartic expression, isn't it? It's good that it's emotional. I've written there that I did do an acoustic night. <laughs> I did do an acoustic night at the local cinema bar a few years ago. And that was actually very cathartic for me. A lot of people that I knew there, a lot of family and friends. And I played some of the songs that meant something to me. So it was actually nice to be able to sort of draw a little circle around it and say, well, they've all heard it now. So <laughs> they can live with that. <laughs> Uh, music can be a path to expression if you develop a relationship with an instrument I've written here and this is an instrument interesting point instruments are not necessarily easy there's a bit of discipline a bit of practice a bit of constantly going back to it not every day maybe maybe every day maybe you do the structured lessons I didn't I just picked up the guitar whenever I felt like I needed to but the the repetition the, the doing it often you develop a relationship with an instrument and you can love an instrument, you can hate an instrument, you can find the one for you and they speak in different ways. You know, the drums are about physically hitting them or they can be really gentle, can't they? Soft taps, <laughs> soft tapping. Uh, but you develop a relationship with an instrument. I, I mean that sincerely. And that process, that discipline, that that you know returning to and utilizing and putting down and feeling and picking up and thinking it that is very uh mentally healthy for working through your feelings and it also gives you a sense of achievement when you get better at it when you become more prolific uh yeah there's something in that as well i guess but for me i was mainly leaning here on the relationship with the instrument yeah i've said it now I don't need to tell you that beautiful music can make you feel, but feeling can shape your creation of beautiful music. Ah, that's a key point, isn't it? And I think this is where I'm not going to disparagingly criticise all pop music now and say, oh, it's rubbish. Um, Capital K brought up Shakira earlier. I mean, I like the tunes and she's done some really sincere music. Uh, the pop world is sold through marketing, image. Uh, you know, it's sold through this machine and even things <laughs> a great example of something that they say oh no yeah but you can still be that man on tiktok doing his uh went to the chip with the billy of tea and then it, da, da, and that can still so it's not just marketing is it but actually it, that was that was all marketing for tiktok wasn't it they were looking for something to be the next big viral sensation and when they found something that they could get behind and oomph, give it that oomph they pushed it and what really spoke to me was when on the brit awards that Billy of Tea, the Billy of Tea. He was on the Brit Awards in the UK, the awards for music in the UK. He was on that year because he was a sensation, wasn't he? An internet sensation. And what they did was they did a parody of his song and made a joke out of it. So it wasn't taken seriously as a medium. It wasn't that sea shanties suddenly were given, uh, you know, serious thought for context and cultural meaning it was just like oh it's a fun joke it's like the crazy frog song it's a meme it's a meme isn't it? it's a meme so yeah you can become a meme <laughs> and yeah there can be breakthroughs and you know other artists on the underground that do things get their their voices heard and i've always been a bit bitter about this because i wanted to do real authentic music and i've always felt that the things that get heard more that get promoted more that get the big sort of reward are the inauthentic and i've always felt as well 
because I've never been part of the inauthentic. I've never been hyped by that in the hype. I've always really leaned towards the things that I just love. That's what my friend was telling me. That's what reminds me of it, and that's why we're talking about this. Uh, is I feel sad for the people who don't have that CD collection of Nirvana, Smashing Pumpkins, of like, you know this depth of. I'm going to sound like an you know, old person by listing old bands like you know Pink Floyd and whatever you know whatever depth it doesn't have to be that depth it can be a different kind of depth you know it can be country and western you can know the history of the blues you know whatever if you if you just exist in this vapid pop moment if it's just whatever this week's chart topper on the radio is and those things are sort of less built on feeling and sometimes they can be provoking of, of emotion quite often it's source isn't it it's a bit source oh a bit of orange oh have you sexed me oh have you seen me sexy oh do you want a harder harder oh you know it's a bit of that but you know there's madonna <laughs> express yourself but i'm not saying that's necessarily bad what i'm saying is that if you're a young person dealing with feelings and you're looking for an artistic expression that can mirror your own and we're not in that little happy bubble then where's the thing for you and the fact that these things are not highlighted and pushed the fact they're pushed away from the mainstream more uh the things of real substance that you really can get something from you know the fact that they're not promoted at the fore that's that's the shame to me and i feel i worry for people who like i say they don't have that that they can fall back on uh i watched a little stream so interesting thing happened this week i watched a little stream of a person i would never watched before i can't even remember her name <laughs> so i can't promote her and say how good she was but she was talking about books and that's why i watched it is because it I, I just flicked on the stream and she was talking about books and i'm like all oh, right okay good like i like because no one else on the thing is talking about books so i'm like this is interesting to me and it was books that i'd read and bless her this was a bit funny she said uh you know this book was written in 1940 she was talking about 1984 which i thought was written in 1948 but she said 38 i'll let her have it whatever uh she uh she was saying about how old it was and Aldous Huxley's New World, Brave New World, and how old it was. And I was like thinking, but we've had Greek mythology, you know, the Bible. Like, there's so many books that are written so long ago. <laughs> like, so long ago. And we still got them. Like, there's such a... From then to now, so much literature. And if you think that 1984 and Aldous Huxley are old, and they brought in these first ideas of this and that, then you're missing a huge trick. <laughs> but you've got so much to explore so great good for you but yeah anyway so they were talking about books and i thought this is really good and i thought this is what made me you know think of this and reflect on this is that if you're young these days and you're not reading 1984 and you're not reading brave new world or z for zachariah or you know if you're reading harry potter as nice as he is as nice as people like him and i'm not a big harry potter fan i'm not a big jk rowling fan I'm not a big fan of her and her work and her approach to work, which seemed to be collage other people's ideas and just sort of spaff it out like a hamburger. But people love hamburgers, don't they? At the end of the day, they've got that giant chess in Harry Potter, haven't they? So come on, come on. Look, <laughs> don't do Harry Potter, don't do him over. But what I'm saying is, if that's your depth, if that, and there might be something in it for you. And we're talking about expression. So if that's your thing, fine. I'm not, you know, I had a little joke. I'm not, you know, bring your book, enjoy it. Go on, wear your hat, be a Slytherin or a Voldemort or whatever you are. I don't care. It's fine. You know, each to their own. It's not hurting me. I don't mind. But I do worry for you that you don't share that debt. Like Dostoevsky taught me things, taught me things about my soul, about who I am, because I read Crime and Punishment. You know, it made me feel things. I cried. <laughs> And I, Harry Potter might do that. It might teach you about the darkness of the tortured soul. It might. But I worry for people without that depth to their library. Not just in terms of literature, but in terms of music, in terms of film. You know, in all of it, in terms of all the culture. If we just want to chew bubblegum every day, then it's, you know, it's going to leave you bereft. So that's why it's so good. And I was also going to make a little note here on Vaporwave. Vaporwave? Why is Scotty Hardy talking about Vaporwave now? And there was this other one where this guy, I was a bit jealous of this, I'll, I'll quite happily say. I'm talking about Envy because I watched ContraPoints <laughs> talking about Envy. Oh, I love ContraPoints. Do I love her because I'm envious of her or do I just love her? I, I don't know. I love her. I just love her. So ContraPoints talked about Envy this week. So go and watch her video. It's brilliant. Uh, but a note on Vaporwave. And this someone put up these remixes of modern songs like Britney Spears and they slowed them down and added reverb 
And it, what it did is it got around the YouTube copyright, which is brilliant. I thought that was very clever. And also it created this sort of new ambient way of listening to these songs. And I thought, you fucking chuffer. I used to do that. I used to, I've got my decks. I used to put on old, um, mom's got uh, 45s and they're like Motown songs. I used to put on old, maybe I should still do this. Maybe I should still do this and I can ride this wave. I won't be known as the first, but I did. And uh, I used to put them on and put them on slow and then try and mix other forms of music into them because the beat pattern was too fast at the high tempo. So I used to slow them down, try and mix a bit of break beat in. And then sometimes I'll be listening to these like old songs on slow. And then I've got that box that makes the reverb and stuff. And I used to do, I used to mess around with the reverb and the loops and the, you know, just with really slow old music. And, and that hit a, a wave, uh, more modern with Britney Spears and people like that. Um, but what it was doing, was someone was using modern culture to create something with more depth to slow it down to give more sentiment and feeling to the music to add that reverb to make you feel more uh in, have more space and to make you feel more i guess in a certain depth i thought it was brilliant i thought it was really good so that happened on the internet and vaporwave things that express feelings that you can't really explain that are part of a zeitgeist part of a time you know, and like I was saying, these people, these young people are not being offered as much depth and they're creating their own on the internet. Memes are not just silly. I, I made a joke about it earlier. You can become a meme. But actually, meme culture has depth. It has feeling. In a small picture, you can express a sentiment. And there's a lot in that. So you'll get onto other forms of art in a minute. Dancing comes next. Oh, we've got Madonna on today, haven't we? We've got Madonna. I'm not going to check. Oh, don't knock the microphone. I'm going to do my talking. I'm going to try and knock it on the head by dog walking time. So let's get through my script and let's see how many tangents we get. <laughs> it is chaos, isn't it? Yeah, it, is, it is always chaos. I, I thought writing a script would be easy. I thought writing a script would make it, bring it together. No, it's more chaotic, more chaotic. <laughs> Dancing comes next. It can be as simple as bopping in your bedroom or kitchen. And some of these things I've written, now I'm reading them. Like, you know, come on. <laughs> come on. What are you doing? Right in the back of a cookbook. Blurb from the back of a cookbook. Dancing. You can bop in your kitchen. Have you tried listening to the radio? <laughs> is this a new mic? Uh, this is the same ribbon mic. Slightly different settings. Trying hard to make it sound better. Made better by the box thing that we bought with the patron. And I discovered that the wire was making a fuzzy humming sound. So I've moved the wire around now and twisted it up over there. But we've got so many wires don't even don't even but i have been getting the other mics rigged up i did some asmr i was just saying earlier I did some asmr whispering on a i tried to make a whisper track like a rap whisper <laughs> and i've been trying to read some of my lyrics in a whisper so I'm, uh, this all little setup is somehow talking about expression is pointing towards asmr again but i never want to promise that now because i always fuff up i always make a promise and then never fucking chuff it do it so let's do it first and then make the promises after Dolce and Gabbana, Fendi and Madonna. <laughs> oh yeah, like Donna, Donna, Fiona, Fiona, Donna, Madonna, Karen. No, it's, it's got one. I got one. Uh, <laughs> um, Madonna, there. That, that's the Vogue era as well, isn't it? Strike a pose. There's nothing to it. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, man, voguing. Voguing's a form of expression, isn't it? Talking about dance, that's what we're doing now. Dance, voguing, God, those lads, they changed the world, didn't they? They changed the way people thought about uh, powerful images of, uh, of freedom, didn't they? Yeah, the voguers. And then they make their own catwalk in the disco, make their own, like, they brought their own sense of fabulous culture and organically, you know, it's a cultivated this this form. I thought it was brilliant. We should do a whole episode on it one day. But it can be simple as bopping in your kitchen. But it gives you a massive boost. I was going to do the science, but we all know there's endocrines and endocrines. <laughs> there's hormones. You dance, it makes you feel good. Oh, you get your dancing shoes on. You get your dancing. You do your dancing. Your brain goes. That's the dopamine. The dopamine from the dancing because you get the old. Uh, you get you get the old. Um, you get the old. Uh, Get the old. <laughs> don't know who that is. I don't know who that is. That impression. They enjoy dancing though. They're, 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 in my brain, they were an old old club 
like an old smoky atmosphere, old club, like older people dancing. Oh, do you like a dance? Can I, can I interest you in taking you on the floor? Right, look, the club life might not be for everyone, but when I was a kid, I went to a dance class. <laughs> Here's a story. Here's a story. Endorphins, that's it. Endorphins, endocrines. Chuffy now. Uh, here's a story. Oh, I've dropped the lid of the chocolate milk. That means I've got to finish it all now. You don't. You can't put that lid back on now. That's the. That's the rule, isn't it? That's the rule. Don't tell anyone. I'm drinking it out. Of the, no, no one else can have any now. Anyway, I'm drinking it out of the thing. Oh gosh, so many calories in a liter. But at the end of the day, they're good calories, aren't they? Of chocolatey goodness. So. Uh, I went to a dance class. I was dancer of the year 1988. I'll have to dig out the photographs for you sometime. My sister wanted to go to disco dancing class. I didn't particularly. But, you know, when you're eight years old and your seven-year-old sister wants to go to disco dancing class and your parents want to leave you somewhere once a week for at least an hour, <laughs> oh, then you go, don't you? You go. So I did. I went. And I was probably... There was only two boys, me and this other lad called Scott. Hi, Scott, if you're definitely not watching. But, you know, uh, someone I got on well with and always have time for I guess is a way of saying that a friend a friend isn't it but not someone I would call up and you know go and see all the time but someone I've got time for anyway um, we were young boys in the class mainly other girls in the dance this is disco dancing with the costumes and the you know um, but I was chuffing doing it I was into it I danced through the year 1988 I won an award got my got my levels got my grades did my routine <laughs> got my you know I was in that dance class to win <laughs> there's no winning you can't win dancing but I was taking it seriously you know I was doing it all up until the point where uh, I remember as I was sort of turning like growing up a bit and getting a bit more aware of like uh, being cool <laughs> I don't know whatever and my dance teacher wanted me to do a couple of moves that I was like oh they're a bit cringe cringe would now be the word back then I didn't think I would have just said embarrassing would have been the word embarrassing I didn't want to do them I didn't have it in me to express myself and say no thanks that's not the kind of dancing I feel comfortable doing so I just didn't go back to dancing anymore I just said I don't want to do that anymore so I didn't but I carried on dancing in my life didn't I later on I went to ballroom dancing that's a way of expressing yourself is it is it though is it really yeah kind of you do different moods different flavours but you know when you're doing a I should remember the names of them now some of them are a bit more raunchy aren't they and some of them you're a bit more <laughs> <laughs> a bit of a flower out the side of my mouth some of them you're a bit more like that aren't you and some of them you're a bit more laid back and just trying to float this expression but dancing is a good way to learn new skills to meet people it doesn't matter what kind of dancing you can actually do a silly dance class just for fun like uh, everyone who does these dances is now going to hate me <laughs> but like salsa was like a flared wave over our country for about two years everyone knew someone who was doing salsa or there's a salsa class going on it doesn't mean you're going to become like a salsa dancer it doesn't mean for the next 10 years i'm going to be increasing the height of my trousers until they reach here and i'm going to be stamping my heels until they reach this i'm not going to become something like you know <laughs> like out there i'm just going to enjoy a bit of dancing with a few mates just have a bit and then do it for six weeks don't have to go back don't have to become a world's expert just did it for a bit had some fun no, 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 no. But for some, it's the path to self-expression, and you do a bit of salsa, and you realise that your hips don't lie, <laughs> do they? Capital K, and that you know you've got this in you, and you got that, you got that flow, and you got that vibe, and when it's like a na cha cha, and you're just like a pa cha cha cha, and you've got it, and then you go home, and you know, you know, what? I actually like doing this thing, and it actually, you know, it speaks of uh, of my. <laughs> with this thing in me that I can't explain this like matador presence that I don't get to do all the time but I enjoy expressing because it's part of me and it's not pride in horrible mean things nationalism and you know rudeness it's, it's pride in the joy of the the human expression and the dance and the music and yeah you might end up being a salsa dancer remember we can't name what we're trying to express so being drawn to the mosh pit or getting it all out on the dance floor it can be just organic and it can leave you feeling changed ah oh, what scotty hot he's been writing a script but it can still be an unnamed thing it's not an object you don't carry this 
bag on. I've got this bag of troubles that I'm taking with me to the club this weekend. And I'm going to get them on the dance floor and I'm going to get them out and I'm going to dance a dance that means boss was being mean to me. And I'm going to dance a dance that means got trouble paying my bills. And, you know, that whole Saturday Night Fever film was about, uh, you know, money's hard, life is tough, but we just go out and dance and forget it. You know, it, it can be about forgetting it, whatever. But it's mysterious. And you go in there thinking, oh, I'm stressed and I'm fed up. And you come out thinking, yeah, <laughs> Woo! Please, don't, I don't need any flyers. No, that's fine. I don't need any flyers. No, no, that's fine. I'll, well, okay, I'll take them. I, I, if I'm taking that one, I'll take yours as well. I'll, I'll take them all. I'll take them all. No, I don't need all of them. Or well, to hand them out. Well, I've just I needed to go and get a kebab, didn't I? Would, okay, okay, fair enough, fair enough. I'll just. Do you, would you like a flyer? Would you like a flyer? Would you? Sorry, I'm not. I don't work here. I've just this guy just gave them to me. Wait, he, well, he's gone. Where's he gone? I think he's gone to get us a kebab. Look, <laughs> you might enjoy yourself. You might leave. Oh, look, want to become famous? We've been through this. We've <laughs> been through this. I don't have the expertise on how to block you, but consider yourself blocked. <laughs> We're talking about authenticity, aren't we? We're talking about authenticity. So no, that, would, that wouldn't work for me. But yeah, uh, you don't know what it is, but you feel changed. It's not an object. It's not something you left on the dance floor, but it is, isn't it? It's something mysterious that happened in the dance, in the flow, in the uh, in the arena. Same with sport. We're going to come on to that later. Art, a wealth of a medium. Right, so we've done dancing. We've cleared dancing. I've only got 40 minutes before the dog needs a poo. <laughs> I'm not going to get through the whole world of art, am I? But let's just say... It's a wealth of a medium, but I've got some points that are a bit different that you might want to consider. You can paint a picture. Everyone always, it's the obvious one. No, oh, we're not going to just dis disregard it though. A picture is a child's most preferred choice of expression. <laughs> Mind blown. I did some research. Children, especially children who are shy, they express themselves quite confidently sometimes by drawing pictures. It's not every child's choice not every child's choice but the most common choice for shy children is drawing wow they like drawing so do we we're all children inside we like drawing do a bit of video drawing it's good it helps you to express things but it doesn't have to be that does it it's interesting to me that often mental health and art begins with a violent or vibrant abstract painting uh there was an irish and we i do this to myself every week i forget to I thought that was my video, so I'll be able to find that really easily. But um, trip to the IMMA Ireland <laughs> True Binaural. This one, this video. We went to this gallery. Hey, everybody, w. right you now, you're going to is having. <laughs> Not you. Not you at home. <laughs> you're on the internet you're on the internet as well I'm on the internet look we can all be quiet for a period of time this artist I'll show you some art because we were talking about art aren't we or maybe I won't maybe the internet won't like it look the internet just simply doesn't like it does it look just having to think about that so there you go <laughs> If that works, it will work. If not, I'm going to carry on with my script. Oh, there you go. Look, yeah, it has worked. Look, I recorded this in binaural, but you can't hear it. William Crozier, that's his name. William Crozier, that's who I wanted to. I'll just show you a vibe. Shall I show you an abstract? Do you know what an abstract looks like? You don't need to see an abstract. Let's find Crozier. Where is he? Here he is. He is here in a minute after the computer's thought about it and decided on it. So, what I'm saying about art while it loads up is that it's interesting to me that uh, vibrant abstract paintings and great painted art, and we're talking about Starry Starry Night, where's my jumper? I've got a jumper of ice, Starry Night. There's a crow's, oh, such a great image. Such a great image. There's another one. He's done these, they're not, you know, that's abstract, isn't it? It's like demon-faced people and bright colours and blue and green and you know that's a crozier he's irish and he went to war and he came back from war and obviously it, you know disturbed him didn't it the war so did these paintings that's kind of what 
on my first might not be for everyone you know maybe you'll think differently to me but when I first think about you know mental health and art and expressing yourself with paintings and I think about da Vinci not da Vinci Van Gogh I always get those two names confused Van Gogh when I think about Van Gogh and his painting you know and his abstractish uh, surrealist impressionist they call it impression I don't look we'll get on to that another time <laughs> when you think about that this is the sort of thing you think about isn't it mental health and art but it's interesting to me that great painted art comes from the hands of often troubled individuals and if you dig a bit deeper you get other stuff as well this is like just one aspect of art isn't it but um someone else who's troubled that produces art is Ai Weiwei oh god I should have uh, how are we going to find this Ai Weiwei he had him then he had him Ai Weiwei. Uh, Ai Weiwei is dealing with Chinese politics. I want to say politics. Um, so, you know, he's grown up and been affected by the Chinese state. Is a better way of saying it, isn't it? Affected by. And he produces things that are in, in exactly, you know, the most beautiful ways, but have some sort of more... Like they're abstract in different ways, aren't they? Where's sunflower seeds? It's on this page, but you can't see it there. All right, how do I make it so you can see it? It's not going to do it for me, is it? It's not. Gonna, you're not going to do it for me, are you? You're not going to do it for me. I want them to see it. There you go, sunflower seeds. Look, see that? It's a great big pile of sunflower seeds. So it's not a painting. It's not vibrant colours. It's not any of that. It's an idea. It's that conceptual stuff, isn't it? The stuff that I love. It's an idea that is manifest in a form what does it mean well it means stuff it's social Ai Weiwei's mental health is different to the mental health of someone who uh, went to war in Ireland isn't it? It, it he's trying to convey different ideas different ideas uh, but equally important ones oh, I've accidentally opened up the news let's quit that please thank you uh, so what I'm trying to say here and you could also look at Banksy I don't have to get a Banksy up for you to know what Banksy is uh in other aspects, social feelings and concepts can be better expressed by art. So I will and Banksy, what they're doing is they've got feelings about the world they're in and they're hard to explain. They're big concepts. And what do they do to express them? They create these things. You could call them sculptures. They create these objects, these artworks, and they help everyone to understand these ideas. When people see a Banksy, they're like, oh yeah, I get that. It's clever, isn't it? But I get that. We all see what he's trying to say there. Comment on society. It's a pile of sunflower seeds. It's a comment on society. And it helps him feel better because the things he's struggling with, I guess, I guess, I kind of know, but uh, the things he's struggling with, this is his way of at least working them through. Yeah. So feeling that you're creating something that only expresses your feelings but also asks questions of others, that makes a a big difference to some people and so I suppose I think the best way to get started in art because this has got to be tied in I've got to keep doing it tying it in uh, it's we're about expression aren't we talking expressing yourself and how you can learn to express yourself in this way so rather than being specific and saying this is a course on how to do painting I'm saying the best way to get into it is visiting galleries going experiencing other people's work especially the work of interesting vibrant different artists and letting it soak in be in those galleries look at the things and then decide what you want to go and buy which color paint and what idea you want to try and push towards uh, and actually get busy doing it actually have a crack at making something have a go at it. it could easily be just painting and drawing as we've said very good expression tools but you can use anything, can't you? You can get interested in anything. Uh, artistic, generally here, but also we're going to go on to see some other stuff as well. <laughs> in fact, let's do that now. Let's do other forms of expression before I finish up with my final two. My final two are going to be writing and game development, just in case you wanted to know. I'm not going to keep that a secret. Right, number one, though. Other forms of expression. We can look at making videos, designing clothes, sport, architecture, role-playing games. There's an endless list of discovery. And the main point is to have a go at it. It's to find the thing that you like, to find the thing that resonates with you, that seems to allow you to express or uh, look into the things that you want to, to... It's kind of like you feel it organically. You know, you know the vibe is right with 
this piece of media with that group of people you, you just know don't you changes over your life it's important to make sure that you keep that door open that you don't say okay i'm a a mosh pit rocker therefore i'm not going to go and look at any sunflower seeds and i'm definitely not going to go and have my hips shaking in a salsa no 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 got to be open to everything because you wouldn't be a goth rocker if you didn't have an open mind in the first place to look at the alternative so you've got to be open to, to the whole point of working these things through the whole point of this being a process of self-discovery of expression is that through expression you can develop so it might be that by doing it you might change the things you want to do and that's okay that's okay that's good so that i wanted to say was important these other forms of identity uh, sorry we're going to look at identity in a minute but these other forms of expression are are varied and wild and wide and they could be anything from makeup to hair to um, a complete disregard for your makeup and hair and a passion for cooking you know it could be anything and it can be different for everyone else so it's th that's all good that's all good being part of that is good writing got half an hour i want to knock writing out i was going to read some poems but i'm not going to or maybe we'll have a look at one uh, and then i want to talk about identity so writing can be personal it can lead to great things. Journaling can give you a record of events and it also helps you think through things as you commit them to text. If you post on Facebook, you're only one step away from actually the proper blog. Excuse me, I've drunk so much chocolate milk now it's repeating on me. <laughs> if you do write on the old Facebook though, you are only one step away from a proper, a proper vlog, aren't you? A proper blog. Because that little post there, that little tweet that you do, you can expand on that a few more words a thing you know you can write a sentence a paragraph about the thing you're thinking maybe turn it into a little blog post you're only one step away from being a writer most of us are it's not easy for us to think that we've got that whole book in us but you do a little bit every day you find your time have a crack at it it's interesting uh, but writing can be you know in terms of expression it can be the most direct as well i've, I've written even though art seems more vivid and more direct and more raw music to me seems very direct but with the writing you can literally say the things like we all the way back to the top talking to friends is the main one the number one but with writing you can literally say the things can't you you can literally say them and you have time uh, a great phrase i saw on the television recently was if i'd had more time i'd have written you a shorter letter and that's that's our podcast all the all over. I spend ages yabbling on about things that could be a bit more concise if I spent more time to edit them, which become more concise when I edit them. But yeah, like you know, if I had more time, I'd have written you a shorter letter. But with writing, you can really compose. I mean, it's literally composing, isn't it? But you, you think things through more than once. You choose the different words that represent it best. Maybe even you go to the dictionary and, and check out if that word you're saying is what it means because I've said it all these years and I'm pretty sure, but I'm not. Before I write it down, I'm just going to check. Uh, <laughs> it's not the same as using Grammarly. Right. <laughs> but it should be clear, shouldn't it? Writing should be one of the main ones. But I think it's interesting that I've gone through all the other ones first and I've left writing to the end. And Poetry Corner, I've written down there Poetry Corner, so we have to do this now. I'm a factual, got to do it, not waving but drowning. This is Poetry Corner for today. Stevie Smith. Always wondered whether Stevie Smith was a man or a woman, but in today's day and age, I think what a wonderful concept that they can just be a they. <laughs> Not waving, but drowning. I'll read it, won't I? I'll read it. Oh, it's gone all over my face. You can't see my face. I'll read it. It's sad. I've got a bit of a stuffy nose from all that hay fever walking in the fields today, but... Oh, doggy needs his walking half an hour. This is a good one, though. And it's one I wanted to alight on the other week. And I just thought I wanted to bring it up. It's for Mental Health Monday. Nobody heard him, the dead man. But still he lay moaning. I was much farther out than you thought. And not waving, but drowning. Poor chap. He always loved larking. And now he's dead. It must have been too cold for him. His heart gave way, they said. Oh, no, no, no. 
It was too cold always. Still the dead one lay moaning. I was much too far out all my life. Not waving, but drowning. See, now I'm trying not to cry. <laughs> No, I'm trying not to cry. But uh, how powerful, isn't that? Isn't that powerful? Seems a bit silly in a way, doesn't it? Silly little thing about the seaside. There's some really strange... Like, you can analyse that in so many different ways. But there's so many... Just, for me, I've always felt that it's like got this strange bounce to it. This metre of... Uh, it's almost like a conversation at one point. Poor chap, he always loved larking. Where's that come from? And now he's dead. It's not like rhyming, like a poem. It's not like what? It's like it kind of, and doing so, it stutters you out of your thought pattern of lovely poem, swimming, waving, drowning. It it, it like gives you this um, this little kick or a prod, in my opinion. And now he's dead. Full stop. No, it's it's not a full stop, does it? After now he's dead. It's just a poem poems always break break my brain a little bit because I want to use punctuation more than anything I want the punctuation to tell me when to start and stop talking but I have to be respectful of the the form they've decided and now he's dead is its own is it like a space after isn't it it's like a space they haven't written it's, it's what they haven't written that's made the difference and the repetition but, but of course you know I'm only saying these things about the um, super segmental features of the language. <laughs> Just pop out my degree every now and then. Uh, I don't have a degree, but you know, don't even like poems. That was Loki. Isn't it? It's, it's amazing, isn't it? It's amazing. It, what's really amazing with it, though, is the simple concept that we can understand. Expressing yourself. Expressing yourself. I wasn't waving. I was drowning. Like we. Just it's a concept, isn't it? It's just. It's so much in that one line, and it's repeated. <laughs> it's repeated, but I feel it. You know, I I I, I understand that you feel it too. That uh, sometimes <laughs> it might look to the rest of the world like you're smiling and you're waving, mightn't it? It might look that way, and you might even be doing so. Or maybe they've got it wrong. You know, maybe you're out there and you're struggling. What's interesting in this poem is that the the per like there's a inherent sadness as well, a sentimental sadness because the person, the dead man, who's moaning. It's interesting as well that the dead man is alive, isn't it? He's still moaning, not dead, but they say he's dead. There's this strange concept in there, but it gives you these things to sort of hold on to. Dead man, <laughs> drowning. And then it kind of like like two ice creams gives them to you like that. And then you sort of watch them melt over your hands as you realise that that's you. <laughs> you're not holding ice creams, you're in the sea. <laughs> and you're waving. And you just wish that, you know, they would realise. Maybe we're not expressing ourselves as well as we could. But wrapped up in that, wrapped up in that, the inability to express ourselves... Is pure core heart expression that we can all understand. So it's magic that poem. It's magic. You know, it's saying that we don't understand each other sometimes. We don't see into the hearts of men as we should. Send men, patriarchy. We don't see into the hearts of people as we should. But it shows you into the heart of the author. And the author has your heart too. You know, we're all, we're all waving and drowning. But on Mental Health Monday, we're reaching out our hands and, you know, we're forming a protective life ring, aren't we? So, there we go. I can't help with the patriarchy. It was drummed into me, wasn't it? I grew up, literally grew up in a world where the elders taught me the concepts of the patriarchy were to be upheld and that, that they were good. You know, be a man, be a tough man, make sure you can provide for your family, make sure that you, uh, I don't know, you know, I, I was taught to, to, to do that. Mental Health Monday's not quite over yet, not quite over yet. Although, you see, the thing is, we started at 8pm GMT, and now it's 
20 to 10 GMT. So in my world, my dog, he needs his walk. He goes for a walk around the block at 10 o'clock. And if he doesn't get to do it, he's there at the door like, I want my poo. I'm not doing it in the garden. I have to go around the block. So we've got about 20 minutes before the doggy uh, alert. <laughs> um, and I did want to talk about identity. I did want to talk about identity. And this is really going to be like an add-on that we're going to talk about in a bigger way in the future. But there's Madonna and there's cultural identity. This is from the A-levels. From the A-levels? What are you want about A-level sociology? I don't want to do A-level sociology. That's boring. No, it's not. Listen, cultural identity. What I want to talk about here briefly, and I'll raise it in like, like, like dropping a, a bad, bad smell in the room. I'm going to raise it and then I'm going to leave it there and then you can deal with this. <laughs> you can find a way of expressing it in this week. Um, some people I'm really proud of some people I'm proud pride's not a virtue I have to remember this but some people I'm really proud of or that I see in culture and it makes me well up with like we're getting there like we're getting there some people I'm really proud of um capital K you mentioned uh drag race the other day uh I'm really hard I mean I worked as a hairdresser as well so uh you know, I've got friends who are of all sexual orientations, I should say, and of varying degrees of fabulousness <laughs> from like, you know, dressed not at all extravagantly to completely like full makeup, the, the, the shebang, you know what I mean? So um, I'm really proud. Pri I mean, pride, we do talk about pride, don't we? Gay pride, you know, we talk about pride, the pride march. Um, but when I see these... Um, expressive figures these people who are expressing this um celebration of their expression of themselves uh it makes me think you know proud proud we're getting there you know we're, we're gonna you know we're flying that flag and this is the you know the ganji warrior crew this is the army these are the people i'm part of this is you know it's happening we're there we're not you know we're winning we're winning that's it makes me feel good it makes me feel good but Talk about expression, aren't we? Talk about personal expression, identity expression. And what's interesting, because I was watching ContraPoints, someone who I value highly, uh, and she talks about gender politics, identity, uh, importantly, you know, importantly, and comes has a voice that isn't mainstream heard and has really important, has done a lot of research, has lived a lot of these um, struggles and has a really important thing to say about some of these things uh, identity is part of all of this what, what you are expressing quite often is your feelings about this has happened that's happened this that but also part of your choice of means of expression is your identity in a way and what I wanted to pick apart <laughs> I wanted to destroy it <laughs> I wanted to destroy it just quickly by looking through these A-level notes, All right? It's a construct for a start. It's a construct identity. It's socially constructed, we say in sociology, socially constructed. And what that means is that the box, the lines that, that we're drawing around are agreed on by each other. So, you know, we're just people, aren't we? We're just people. I'm not a this or a that or a thing or a them. I'm just a people. I don't have any boxes. You know, I like doing whatever. I like eating chocolate. I like eating ice cream. I'm not a chocolate person. I'm not an ice cream person. I've just got tastes. They vary, whatever. But now we need to draw a line around it. We need to say, what kind of people do you most want to sleep with? <laughs> Can you definitely say for a fact it's them? Because we need to draw a box around you and put you in that box. Thank you. And then, uh, what? What? no, hang on, wait. You're, you're kissing somebody you're not supposed to kiss because you're a boy in there no you need to go in this box I'm afraid so if you're kissing that person you need to go in that box now and then hang on you want to what you've got feelings about your your identity regarding your your biology and your sexual sorry we're gonna have a problem now because we've got another box that we needed to get you know this is part of our social construct it, it's important for society because you need to talk about things give them labels that's what we're going to come on to labels you need to say this is a thing this is a that I can understand it because it's that. Uh, I'm scared of this. <laughs> but it's not that important deep down to who you really are is to be able to draw a label around it. But we're saying on self-expression that we're going to try and find a way of 
you know expressing ourselves some things that you can't write down that what are they who am i inside i can't write that down by saying i am a boy it doesn't mean who i am inside it, 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 these other things gender social class age religion ethnicity they're really helpful i am a uh um a mixed race muslim <laughs> living in england in the what am i middle class <laughs> whatever do you know what i mean like that you can draw those lines with those definitions and they like a better way of me explaining this is i love birmingham city i'm a birmingham fan i'm a blue nose i support birmingham city football club and it's part of my identity i've got a tattoo of it on my leg i'm a i'm a blue nose you can't take me to go and sit and watch the villa or the baggies you can't take me to go and sit and watch a different football team and i can't have the same fit I'm, I'm, like, I'm a traitor what am i doing here i went to watch bristol when i lived in bristol i wore my birmingham top because i am birmingham birmingham is me but you can't ask the people at the football club oh where's scott this week and they don't care that that i he is not birmingham goes on without him <laughs> like but it's been internalized by me as part of my identity i've been able to draw a label i'm a football fan i am a football fan i do you know what i mean it's it's hard to but really am i am i that thing when i'm looking at my expression when i'm digging deep when i'm trying to produce my art is that the core of my you know is that coming from within me is that coming from my heart is speaking of could i have been a birmingham fan could i have been a, a arsenal fan if i lived in london yeah you know, if I spent too much time in Spain and not enough time in Birmingham, could I have started becoming a Barcelona? Fan? Yeah, yeah. It doesn't. My identity's fluid, isn't it? Is it? Can it be? My ethnicity can't be fluid. That can't just change because I want it to. My gender can. My social class is fluid, but not based on my ability to change it necessarily. <laughs> uh, what the chuff? What this is, is it's identity is complex and it's both these things. It's fluid, changeable, socially constructed, internalized, internally projected. It's it's complex. And like I was saying, I didn't want to scare you too much, but this will pick it apart a bit. You don't need to be connected to, um, wonderful as it is, I'm going to pick ethnicity because it's, the most difficult of these to talk about i think it's wonderful that we have traditions based on ethnicity it's wonderful to uphold them to be respectful of them to keep them up but also it's absolutely fine to throw them away and completely not care because just because of where you're born or where your parents were from or your genetic marker from this particular line of heritage doesn't mean that you can't or can or should or shouldn't you know like ethnicity is irrelevant but celebrated and important mind blown mind blown isn't it how much you base your identity on these different factors in sociology we talk about gender social class age religion sorry region it says there but religion and ethnicity more because we've got lots of studies on them someone studied religion a lot someone studied social class a lot they're easy to put into a curriculum but there's a, a wide myriad of factors that you could claim as part of your identity or disregard there are significant selection of the main sources of identity in modern society so society tells you these should be part of your identity as well so that's important to bear in mind these are the studies i want to just move on to this bit about labeling the difference between labels and categorized so people who share certain similarities such as being female are placed in a social category so you've got characteristics that define you. So now, all of a sudden, the rest of society is saying, okay, so you can be a woman if you have X, Y, Z. If you, it might have used to be long hair. <laughs> but, you know, ContraPoints will tell you that there's a, a whole conversation to be had about whether, and I wanted to do a video about this. I don't think it's my place, but I want to get to, this is a question I've got for a podcast. I'd love to get ContraPoints involved. Does, do ovaries define a woman? You know, and then you get these philosophical questions like, well, somebody can have a hysterectomy. Are they no longer female? Like what the definitions and categories define who you are, are ascribed onto you. And then you try and form your expression. You might 
be expressing the things that maybe you know uh how do i explain this damn i feel like a woman <laughs> that song maybe you play up to the characteristics that you're supposed to because society has told you that to be a real man you have to be tough or to be a real woman you have to be sexual or subservient or to be whatever it is you have to fit this box and these are the parameters that define it so you know work on adhering to those parameters please maybe not even please maybe you feel in yourself i want to get in that box so i need to make these things more obvious because damn it i'm in that box it's confusing and it's mixed in with your feelings your thoughts on yourself as ascribed to you by society so we talk about expectations about how expectations change the way you behave and grow and things like that experiences are different but there's something else that i wanted to a light on here about the uh the labeling oh, i've got to get this right now um my mind's just drawn a blank all of a sudden cultural identity uh lots of you will see if you look into sociology that this is just the tip of the iceberg right there's so much to be said about identity and uh roles the patriarchy the whole thing you know it's the creation of roles through identity and stuff like that uh so much to be said for that but that's not what i wanted to rely on here is it Um, I wish I could replay what I, I can in the edit, but not right now. Uh, I've never written on my notes. Uh, identity. Just written identity. Uh, yeah, so in summary, you can ignore all that. You can ignore all that. Their expectations, their characteristics, their boxes, their lines. You can celebrate it. Expressing yourself is about finding, you know, it's, oh, whatever, hey, hey sh getting distracted now, hang on a second. It's just some comings and goings and I expect it's because the dog needs his walk, you know. So there we go. I was going to say something about identity, but, you know, maybe you can figure it out. <laughs> maybe you can figure it out. What I wanted to really say was, and I was I'm in a bit of a rant on there, was complicated, isn't it? It's confusing. And I think that's the key. Expression. The key about expression is that it is complicated and confusing. And through processing, through you know, doing your painting, through writing your song, through performing it, through having the cry afterwards, <laughs> through all of that, you learn, you change, you evolve, you express, you know, you feel better, you move forward. But there are no solid answers, maybe. There are no, uh, you're not supposed to come to some mystic conclusion. You're not supposed to have, after painted the picture, solved the feeling. You know, it's okay just to feel them and it's important to, as we looked at earlier. So that's where I'm going to alight that. Oh, damn it, we've hit... We're onto the... <laughs> we're into the individual figures for the percentages on the battery there. Individual figures now, 8% battery. Yeah, it is the end of Mental Health Monday. I've gone off on a little tangent. If I ever remember what that point about identity was, I will get back to you. <laughs> this week, I am going to endeavour to be on the internet more. I can't be a streamer and not be on the internet as much can I? I need to be here more i've got to try and do it harder better stronger uh other things i'm going to be releasing this music if i can get a decision on how to uh deal with the visual aspect do i need to do a music video do, can it just be a lyric video can it be neither um, but either regardless i will get these pieces of music to you my Ganji Puka Warrior crew, certainly to the patrons, actually. I'll upload them to Patreon. I'll do that. That's a good idea, isn't it? Finally, something that you can be rewarded with that's unique, that I came organically and I didn't have to struggle with. <laughs> Don't know whether you like it or not, but I really just want it to be out there. I really want it to be out there. This expression. So I'm going to go walking the doggy. God, it's been a hard day, really, as well. I'll tell you that. It's been a hard day. I looked at that video of 
the last day my dog previous dog's last day i watched that video and it made me upset and then i feel better from being here with you i hope you feel good too you be good my little podcast if you can't be good then uh, express it 